We can talk now to the Labour MP Meg Hillier, who's chair of the Public Accounts Committee. Today's report from the National Audit Office concentrates on the same kind of cladding as that on Grenfell Tower. A fund of £200 million was set up to help pay for it to be removed from private tower blocks in May last year. Only a tiny amount has been used, just over a million pounds. Why do you think that is? Well, I think one of the problems here is that it's often difficult to track down who's the responsible owner. Um, and the Secretary of State at the time had to issue a ministerial direction because it was taxpayers' money for private properties. But I understand that in some cases there were tens of owners, tens of hundreds, you know, up to 90 owners, because these had been passed on almost as financial assets. And I think one of the problems here is if there's ever an argument for, for leasehold reform or for ownership registers, this is it, because it's it's very difficult to pin down. And if government pays up front with taxpayers' money, it's not got a good record generally, governments as, as in general, not, as, not particularly this one, of getting money back from the private sector after the event because of the legal complexities of that. But it's difficult for the people living in those properties too, who are you know, in a terrible position. And when leaseholders have gone to tribunals over this to try to ascertain who should be responsible, the tribunals have found in favour of the leaseholders. So it is a change of legislation needed, is it? Yes, and there's a lot of us here in Parliament, uh, a very uh, active cross-party group with Peter Bottom at the helm and Hilary Benn very all involved as well who are you know, senior people and we're all working to try and see what can be done around leasehold reform. The, the government has talked about leasehold reform but that doesn't solve this problem on its own. That This ex it demonstrates very clearly why we need a change but at the moment you know I, I like many MPs have constituents with lives on hold as we heard um, from the uh, the gentleman you were speaking to earlier um, who's, who cannot move on because they need bits of paperwork. So I think one of the other things here is that the mortgage industry does need to step up and say very clearly, you know, sometimes there are, I believe, I'm trying to dig out who, but there are some mortgage companies that are still willing to lend against these properties because they are often safe, safe enough to live in while we're waiting for remedial work to be done because of the mitigation that's taking place. But people are still living in this really big uncertainty, not alone, not let alone the risk, but in a way for the people in less risky properties, they're waiting right down to the end of the line, as John was saying earlier, that they're focusing on the riskiest buildings first. So if you've got a building with a little bit of a problem or a cladding that you haven't actually investigated yet, uh, you know, you don't have any pictures of it, so you have to go into the building, that's going to be way down the line and could take a decade if, if it's just left to the natural devices of the market. Do we need to look again at the system of safety inspections? We did have a house builder saying yesterday that there shouldn't be a blanket ban on this cladding that was used on Grenfell and what we need is a more risk-based approach. I mean, I think that would make a, a, be a sensible thing to look at, but of course the government set up this building safety regulator. That will be very much part of their remit and it's got to be, but I think what we need is transparency on this so that if you're living in one or if you're going to try and buy a property you know what you're getting into and you can look clearly and see what's happening and frankly some of the experiences I've had across my desk are shocking about how private developers pass the buck and really don't want to keep a clear record because that puts them right firm and square as liable for the problems that they then later create so the reputable developers some of them are paying for it completely um, and that's a, I think really good but some of the less reputable ones or the smaller ones that perhaps struggle to are just not stepping up to the mark and that's the big challenge for government if they don't step up to the mark who's going to pay for it should it be the taxpayer but you know there are issues around that as well but it could cost up to 10 billion to put this right and the government put aside a billion in the budget uh but that's going to be it's a drop in the ocean so there's a long way to go on this and in the meantime people's lives are on hold um, and they're facing eye-watering life-changing bills